Okay, everybody, we'll go ahead and get this party kicked off this afternoon. Welcome to our third webinar in the Spring Webinar Series. Uh, today, we will cover Bulletproof Done For You Physician Marketing. And the primary focus of this webinar will be a detailed description of marketing care plan oversight to physicians. So it is primarily for home health Medicare agencies and hospice. However, since a good many of the attendees on here are non-medical uh, or you've also got that line of business, uh, I've added another portion toward the end today that covers non-medical private duty physician marketing. Now, as always, as I'm going through the presentation today, there are a couple of boxes to the right-hand side of your screen. It's a chat box and a question and answer box. Feel free to type any questions you have in either one of those because when we get to the end of today's presentation, I will actually go through these and uh, answer them live or get to as many as possible. Uh, also, we've got a couple uh, of other folks from TAG that are watching uh, or monitoring these boxes. So if you have any technical difficulties or can't hear me or all of a sudden uh, my voice goes out, please uh, let us know. Uh, also, as we're going through today, you know, we, we do receive requests for uh, two things after the webinar. Number one are samples. I'd certainly be happy to send you out samples of anything that you see here today. Uh, and the second are the slides from today's presentation. And uh, you will get a follow-up email uh, after today's webinar, probably going out sometime tomorrow, that will send you a link where you can go and download the slides from not only today's webinar, but uh, past presentations as well. I'm Chris Giles. For those of you who don't know me, um, if you're new to the webinar series, welcome. If you're coming back, thank you so much for, for joining us again today. Uh, I'm a sales associate here at TAG Home Care Marketing, and we are a leading producer of marketing products for the home care industry uh, and an Inc. 5000 company, one of the America's fastest growing companies. I'll pull up the map here, show you where we're at. We're in Franklin, Tennessee, just south of Nashville. And the great thing about being here at TAG is the support staff that I've got built up around me. Uh, I've got home care sales coaches, boots on the ground experience, extensive skilled home health nursing, therapy, hospice, and marketing experience that are here that work one-on-one -on -one, uh, with clinical liaisons, coaching them. Uh, on a focused sales message and how to approach each referral sector in their market, among uh, many other things and many other strategies. We've got some of the most talented graphic designers, web designers here. We have master printers and copywriters. Uh, plus, we're also a high-end publishing firm. Uh, we've got over $10 million worth of state-of-the-art printing equipment uh, that you can use as your disposal uh, when you have TAG as your marketing partner. We've got 30 years of home care experience uh, and what we do is create proven marketing products and services that, quite simply, are going to help you grow your referrals. Uh, our products and services uh, include the sales and marketing coaching that I discussed, uh, some done-for-you personalized marketing collateral, which you will see some of that this afternoon. Uh, we have a customer relationship management software, up-to-date clinical marketing assistance, and really just a host more tools uh, that are going to help you realize greater success in the sales and marketing arena of home care. Um, and we tell all of our home care clients, and you've probably heard me say this before, if your agency can dream it up as a marketing strategy, we can make it happen for you. We've got a great staff here. If you're close to Nashville, uh, please come by for a free tour. Come down to Franklin. We'd be happy to, to show you around. Uh, if you can't make it up, at least you can talk to us by phone, and one of the best ways to do that is through a coaching call. Uh, and as always, I'll tell you at the end how you can schedule your free call uh, and start building that relationship with Tag Home Care Marketing. Before I do get into uh, the presentation today, uh, let me just say this. Um, we do want you to know that we feel your pain. Uh, I mean, the rules of, of marketing and reimbursement have definitely changed, haven't they? We've, we've got upcoming cutbacks and reimbursements, increased competition, uh, but kind of uh, what I've been preaching, so to speak, uh, in, in the webinar series is now is the time to grow your business through effective marketing uh, and above that differentiation uh, from your competitors, creating the blue ocean. We talked some about the blue ocean strategy. Uh, and, and the reason 
that I've hit on that so much is because your agency will never have a better opportunity to grow your local market share uh, than right now. What we've got to do is kind of make changes to keep up, or you're, you're destined to lose market share if you don't. So we've got to prepare ourselves for much greater censuses at slightly reduced reimbursement. And um, it, hey, it'd be nice if our profit models could just stay the same, but the truth is there aren't. So uh, the key there is to update your marketing strategy and to grow your revenue, and that's what we're here to do and, and to help you do. So speaking of that, uh, the need for increased revenue, that's where we're going to begin our discussion today on physician marketing. Being aware of their increased need for revenue and developing a marketing strategy based on that is something that will definitely separate you uh, from all those other agencies out there only aware of their own needs. Uh, if we look at physicians today, most of them are like small business owners. They're forced to turn a profit after the expenses of their own non-billable clinical and, and clerical staff overhead. And then you add to that the static cost of doing businesses, um, which everybody has, mortgages, taxes, other operational expenses, and you kind of get an idea of the challenges uh, that are facing your physicians today. So if we look at some data here uh, from a national physician search and consulting firm, Excuse me. The average annual revenue generated by primary care physicians, defined as family practitioners, general internists, and pediatricians, uh, was just over $1.4 million. And the average annual revenue generated by specialist physicians was just over $1.5 million. Both sectors are down slightly, with the physicians having to see more and more patients each year to arrive at that same annual revenue. So compare your own home care business. Uh, look at your business model and, and the difference in your ability to bill many different individual nurses, therapists, and home care aides to arrive at a much greater uh, potential profit model. Physicians are allowed to bill for their services only. So, I mean, are you really surprised that physicians worry about profits and revenue? And if you consider this, most home health agencies worried about a 3 to 4% cut in reimbursement for Medicare. Uh, all the while, your local physicians barely missed a 21% cut in reimbursement last year, and they're constantly facing the threat of more cuts. So to make sure your physicians are profitable, don't be afraid to talk to them about reimbursement and revenue issues. It can get their attention. Uh, the sales coaches we have here on staff will quickly remind you how to build relationships with your local primary care physicians by bringing their patients back to them after hospital stays. You want to quit opening up started care plans with hospital discharge orders. Home health HERG scores are always, always lower with hospitalist discharge orders. So uh, the primary care physician can raise those reimbursement scores for you, and by opening the care plan with the GP, they get their patients back in the fold sooner for follow-up office visits. So that is a win-win situation there. If you're on the non-medical side, um, are you reminding the physicians that your hands-on supervision of their patients will make certain that they're compliant with office visits uh, and, and that your transportation services will help alleviate those missed office visits? When you, when you talk about those, the missed office visits cut deeply into their revenue. Once you start open, openly addressing their profitability and how you can partner with them, you'll see an entire new stream of patients coming to your agency outside the hospital discharges. Um, and again, on today's webinar, what I'm going to do is cover the skilled service potential first uh, and then give insight into the non-skilled physician marketing side. Now, before I get too far into the skilled health services portion of the physician marketing webinar, I've been meaning to uh, bring this up on the past webinar, and I just wanted to touch on it here. Um, yeah, I was talking about our coaches earlier, uh, and we do have ones uh, that have clinical background that are clinicians. And um, one of the big pushes right now, uh, we feel very strongly about having disease-specific sales calls to physicians, and we've come out... Uh, with a new piece, this has been out for a little while, and the response has been phenomenal to this. This is our guidelines for home health admission flip chart. Uh, when we go back to the beginning, I was talking about done-for-you materials. Um, 
this is one of them right here in one of our newest. Uh, it's not only a way to open your referral sources up to the many service options available to discharge patients, uh, but also it's a teaching tool for your sales reps, how to stay on point, speak the language that the referral sources want to hear. We can teach you how to show up at these referral sources and ask for a slice of pie. Go after one specific disease population, not show up asking for the whole pie. So, like I said, the response to this has been phenomenal. Just wanted to uh, to show this to you guys real quick because I, I forgot to bring it up in the last couple webinars. Um, another great teaching point to remember when you're making sales calls to physicians is remember that your local primary care physician's reimbursements, they, they don't necessarily mirror your own. Um, you know, know this one important fact. A physician's payer mix is different from home health. And sometimes they're reluctant to accept Medicare patients because to them, private HMO or PPO or open insurance contacts may provide a greater reimbursement. So knowing your physician's office payer mix is essential to marketing to your community physicians. Uh, and today, I do want to spend a good portion on care plan oversight training because the fact is, is that only about 15% of eligible physicians file for this reimbursement. So that represents a huge opportunity for your agency. Now, I believe a great way to begin that care plan oversight conversation with your physicians or maybe getting that appointment to have that revenue talk is right now we're obviously uh, past the uh, reprieve period for face-to-face, -face, but it is an ongoing education. So I think while you are informing your physician about the new uh, CMS face-to-face -face requirements uh, for face-to-face, -face, you can set that up for a follow-up appointment uh, to discuss care plan oversight. And uh, who knows, with uh, Senator Cantwell and Collins uh, putting out that letter now, maybe we will see some changes uh, in face-to-face -face documentation. Uh, but for now, you're, you're certainly still in the education phase here, and it's a great way uh, to springboard that into a care plan oversight discussion, uh, because each time you're coming back to them with something of value, and that's, that's boosting your relationship and trust with that physician, uh, but also creating top-of-mind awareness for your agency. Uh, just as you can see here, if you had the face-to-face -face talk, you want to leave something like this behind. This is our uh, physician's face-to-face -face pocket guide, branding your agency, right? Uh, and ultimately, uh, the, the end result, boosting your referrals. That's the goals, and turning that account into an A status. So let's get into care plan oversight, uh, and let's talk some basics here. Make sure that you have all of the fundamental understanding of this program. Uh, we're going to look at the components of care plan oversight, which include certification, recertification, and the 30-minute care plan oversight. And then once we've gone through and established the fundamental understanding of CPO, uh, we'll need to make sure that you know exactly who to target with this information. And um, as you might imagine, physicians are at the top of the list, sure, but I think you'll be surprised at some of the other targets. After we speak about who to target, we'll discuss how to target these individuals, uh, and that includes an overview of our four-step proven process. So when we start with the basics here, um, let's just start with an introduction to care plan oversight. When we look at physicians, we know that in the inpatient setting, they are frequently required to manage and coordinate complex medical cases to ensure quality and efficient use of healthcare resources. In a similar way, Medicare has recognized this. They've recognized the same management concept as it applies to home health and hospice patients. As a result, Medicare will reimburse physicians for their involvement in the initial certification for home health services any recertifications, and their function involved with that 30-minute uh, care plan oversight. Now, since 1995, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid will reimburse physicians that certify, recertify, and perform care plan oversight for home care services. Uh, however, we hit on this earlier, according to CMS numbers, only 15% of physicians are aware or understand this reimbursement. On top of that, there have been recent reductions to Medicare reimbursement uh, for inpatient office visits. So 
that's got the door wide open again for an opportunity for your agency to differentiate from the competition and educate your physicians on this program. If you can take the following care plan oversight information and sell it to your physicians and practices in your area, you will increase referrals. And I want to give you uh, just a brief example of this, real-world example before we go on. Uh, an account executive for one of our clients used this program to absolute perfection. Uh, now, he had received one or two referrals from a large physician practice that had a large Medicare base, uh, but he was missing out on the majority of referrals that were being sent to other agencies. So uh, he decided to approach one of the physicians and the billing manager. Uh, he explained to them the revenue that the practice was leaving on the table by not billing for care plan oversight services. The minute he explained that and how the program worked showed the ease of it, he walked out of there with an A account and a lion's share of their referrals. Now, in order to use this program to its maximum potential, an agency must first understand all of the components. Uh, just a, a quick note here for the hospice agencies in attendance today. The next two items we discussed, certification and recertification, may not directly apply to you, but it's always a good idea to have the information that goes over and beyond. I mean, imagine the effect of helping physicians generate revenue that really doesn't even apply directly to you. Uh, but we will cover the hospice portion of care plan oversight uh, in a few minutes. So let's First, look at certification. That's uh, code GEO 180. The technical definition, I've got it up here on the screen, and I'll uh, just go through this real quick. Physician certification for Medicare-covered home health services under a home health plan of care, patient not present, including contacts with home health agency, and review of reports of patient status required by physicians to affirm the initial implementation of the plan of care that meets the patient's needs per certification period. Let me rephrase that uh, for all of you here. This code will be used only for the initial certification. HICFA has established a separate code for initial certification because it determines that the physician activities involved at this point of care are more extensive uh, than possible later recertification. So the certification is billable uh, once, only once for a patient's home health period. Uh, now, there are some other limitations, such as the patient may not have received home health services in the past 60 days, and in order to bill and be reimbursed for these services, the physician will need to include the 485 uh, as well as the notes reflecting the plan of care. Okay, so the second component is recertification. That's uh, code GEO 179. Now, the technical defini definition here, uh, very similar to certification, but this code is used only after the patient has received services for at least 60 days and should be used when the physician signs the certification after the initial certification. Now, this is billed once per patient home health certification period. Uh, and again, it can only be billed after the patient has received services for 60 days uh, for one certification period. Uh, however, surprise, surprise, there are also exceptions to this. Generally, recertification is used once every 60 days. But it can also be used when a patient starts a new episode before the 60 days have elapsed and that patient requires a new plan of care to start the new episode. I, I don't want to confuse you here. Uh, basically, that would occur when the patient voluntarily transfers to another agency before the lapse of an episode or when a patient is discharged with goals met and then is readmitted during the 60-day period. As with the initial certification, uh, same thing here, in order to bill and be reimbursed for recertification, again, that's the GO-179, the physician must include the 485 as well as the notes reflecting the plan of care. Now, the last component of care plan oversight applies directly to hospice agencies and home health agencies. This is the 30 minutes of documented work on the patient's plan of care each month. Uh, the home health code is GO-181, and the hospice code is GO-182. 
Uh, care plan oversight is defined as physician supervision of a patient under the care of a home health or hospice agency. Uh, this supervision requires a complex, multidisciplinary approach, and some of those physician duties include regular development or revision of care plans, uh, the review of patient reports, review of labs, and communication with other professionals involved in the patient's care. And this does include phone calls. And the basic rules of reimbursement for this are that the patients must spend a minimum of 30 minutes per month per patient providing the above duties. Now, physician reimbursement rates vary depending on location and code. There are 98 different carrier locations across the U.S. Uh, some states have one set of rates for the entire states, uh, while others may have different rates according to specific cities. So we can see here, here's an example of a specific city rate. If we look at the 2009 national average rates versus the 2009 San Francisco rates, uh, San Francisco's rates are some of the highest in the country. Um, and let me just make a, a quick uh, note here. The rates uh, have not changed since 2009. 2009 was the last update of the rates, and a freeze has been put on them since then. So you may receive questions regarding copayment uh, as a frequently asked question about the physician care plan oversight. So let's touch on this. Um, as with all other physician services under Medicare Part B, the beneficiary is responsible for the uh, dreaded 20% copay. Uh, and in effect, many beneficiaries will have supplemental insurance or Medicaid that will cover this cost. Uh, another question that may arise is billing for previous patients. What past dates can a physician bill care plan oversight claims for? Uh, well, uh, this is the newest change in care plan oversight reimbursement, and physicians now have 12 calendar months from the point of service to bill for care plan oversight. So now that I've gone through the basics and, and we've got that understanding of each care plan oversight component as well as how and why physicians are reimbursed, the question becomes now, who do you market this information to? Uh, obviously, physicians should be at the top of your list. Um, however, there may be instances where the physician has objections like they believe it takes too much time or uh, they might not immediately see the benefit of this perceived extra work. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you some items we've developed to quickly show this benefit and, and to grace, greatly reduce those uh, perceived time and effort needed in any shutdown statements uh, about care plan oversight. But if the physician still doesn't see the benefit or, or doesn't have time to speak, the office manager and the billing manager should be your next targets. Those two people are the most motivated, other than the physician, to see financial success. And in fact, they're often incentivized through this financial success. So they're going to see the benefit that you're providing. Another group to keep in mind is physician assistants and nurse practitioners. Although they are only eligible to bill for care plan oversight because they can't sign the certification or the recertification, uh, they can be a great a asset to you. Uh, if the physician's initial obje objection is, eh, there's not enough time, they can allow their nurse practitioner or physician assistant to do the care plan oversight and still generate additional revenue for the practice at a slightly lower reimbursement rate. But remember, that's revenue uh, that they weren't billing for in the past. Medical directors can also bill for care plan oversight, but there are certain restrictions that apply. They cannot have a significant ownership in or significant financial relationship with the agency. Uh, and last, looking at rural clinics, they cannot bill for care plan oversight because they get the higher uh, global reimbursement rates from Medicare. Okay, so you know who you're marketing to, so let's look at how you can market to them and what done-for-you pieces are already available uh, that we've created. We've created a four-step proven process uh, that our clients find very easy to understand and that will completely set you apart from the competition. And we talk about this some, too, 
when, when you're presenting professional collateral to your referral sources, it's backing up your sales message because words are forgotten, right? So you need, you need to leave behinds to back up what you're saying to them and, and continue to brand your agency along with this focused sales message that you're delivering to the physician or referral source. So I want to look at the care plan oversight calculator. This piece has been designed as a quick hitting marketing piece that shows the quarterly and annual revenue that a practice is leaving on the table. You know, oftentimes a physician might be aware of care plan oversight, but they're probably not aware of how much revenue they're missing out on. And, you know, when we talked about the recent inpatient reimbursement cuts, it's going to be a welcome surprise for them. So what we've done here is we've listed each component and description as well as the reimbursement rates for your service area. We make these specific to you as including the reimbursement rates for your service area. Then we outline some hypothetical scenarios based on some very conservative patient referral loads to illustrate how quickly the dollars add up for physicians who are billing care plan oversight. Uh, we start with examples of taking in two new referrals a month up to eight referrals a month. And it, what it does is it's really driving home the amount of revenue that's being left on the table to those physicians who aren't billing for care plan oversight. So the next step in the process is the care plan oversight brochure, which acts as a quick reference for the physicians to help them understand the services and requirements needed to bill for care plan oversight. Uh, inside this brochure, it discusses virtually all the items we've spoken about and that we outlined when we were going through uh, the basics of care plan oversight. It's got the definitions of certification, recertification, care plan oversight, services that are included in care plan oversight, those that are not included. Uh, and documentation. There's a brief look uh, in there at the Form 1500 questions. The third component in the four-step process is the minute tracker. Uh, now, this is designed to assist physicians in tracking minutes for care plan oversight, as well as certification and recertification times. Uh, as you can see here, we've listed the most common activities pertaining to care plan oversight uh, and done it in an easy way to total the minutes. What physicians can do is keep this in the patient file as record for CMS to remain compliant. Uh, now the other side of this uh, is used as a quick reference guide, if you will. It contains specific information for each code as well as the reimbursement rates for your service area. And these sheets come in pads of 25 or 50 uh, and they're completed by customizing this with your agency's logo and contact information. And finally, there's the guide for billing uh, for the Form 1500. This is an easy to follow, color-coded reference to ensure that the physician is not denied reimbursement because of improper filing. Uh, each portion that needs to be completed is highlighted with notes. For some of the smaller practices, you might give this directly to the physician. Uh, and then for the larger practices, this should go to the billing manager or office manager. And again, uh, this piece is customized with your logo and all of your contact information. So let's put this process to action. You've got these tools now. Let's say you've got a physician that you've got a relationship, but you've yet to receive many referrals from them. Because you've got some knowledge of the physician and his practice, let's say you know that he's referring a minimum of, of four patients per month to someone else, uh, to your competition. The doctor, he seems to always limit your time with him, so simply hand him the CPO calculator and show him that based on the minimum of four referrals a month, he's missing out on almost $12,000 revenue per year for his practice, and worse, it's work he's already done. Then you can hand him a CPO brochure and explain that this has all of the details of what's required. Uh, just let him know it's a guide to help him in the reimbursement of that $12,000. Uh, and at this point, you've got him thinking a little bit, and he's probably thinking, you know, wow, this is great. But, you know, I, I probably don't have the time to do this. Let him know that's a valid concern, and that's exactly why you're giving him the pad of minute trackers. Show him that he can easily keep track of all his time and, and that he can just keep it as a record in the patient's file. Uh, then maybe briefly show him, but 
uh, as you're on your way out, you're going to stop by and, and see the billing manager before you leave uh, because you've got a color-coded guide for any billing issues. And there you go. Now, I'll be the first to say, it may never be that quick or quite that simple, uh, but you'd be amazed at, at, at really how easy it is. The message is, again, uh, be a value-added partner to these physicians. Understand more of their reimbursement needs and make Medicare patients even more profitable for them because it truly separates you from the competition and it presents the referral source with a well-thought-out solution and most certainly a focused sales message when you're approaching. Okay, so I'm going to get into the non-medical side here, the best approach for non-medical private duty agencies uh, that they can use to get referrals from physicians. Uh, before I go any further here, again, I just want to send a quick reminder. I see some of you are already putting the questions in the boxes there. That is wonderful. Uh, but again, as I'm going through, if you've got one, please go ahead and write that down as you're thinking about it, because at the end of today's presentation, we will uh, address these live. So the most effective way to reach out to physicians in your market on your private duty services is to correctly match your services to their discharged patients' needs. Um, in other words, make specific flyers targeted uh, to physicians based on what specific disease processes and symptoms, and you match up your products and services to that. You're creating essentially a private duty disease-specific plan of care. Uh, clinicians and physicians recognize the effectiveness of a disease-specific plan of care towards curative outcomes in all home care services, and this is including private duty. What you'll find is uh, the benefits to your referral sources are that the goals and expected outcomes are easily communicated to them. Uh, the interventions to assist the client are customized to their needs. You, you're getting their input on how they want their patient base handled. Uh, and referral sources are more willing to release care of the patient to educated caregivers. Now, for your agency, well, this most certainly sets you apart from the competition. Remember, uh, you're not showing up and throwing up, so to speak. You're not dumping the bucket on these referral sources. Each time, you're just asking for a slice of that pie. You're going after a specific disease population. Uh, during this process, you're most certainly elevating your staff education and care level um, it's going to provide you an opportunity to address disease-specific support group needs. Uh, this is going to open specialty market to your agencies. You certainly uh, have the ability to, to promote host-parasite relationships with uh, some of the skilled care agencies. Uh, and again, you're developing a disease-specific plan of care. Now, as with most care programs, your initial emphasis and focus will be with your staff. Uh, you want to select elite staff members and begin a training program with them and, and document this, document all training uh, and create care specialists. Um, with a disease-specific plan of care, what you're doing here is you're painting a picture to the discharge planner of, let's say, do you have any patients after chemo who after treatment need to go home and cook for their family or run errands or do you have patients who need help with gait and balance? So the next step here is publish the following. Uh, what I've got up here on the screen now are disease-specific brochures. It's outlining the care you intend to provide. Uh, you can do family education flyers, uh, disease-specific aids, such as menus or puzzles, health logs, blood sugar templates. Um, and you want to present your client care plans as being a flexible template for your referral sources. Again, they can modify this for the client's best entrance. Remember, uh, let the referral source be the expert here. When you've got that clinical referral source's input into your flyer, it's almost guaranteeing that you will get some of their patients on services because you're allowing them to instruct you in their patient's discharge needs. Uh, you want to thoroughly interview all the referral sources. This is uh, one of the process in a successful sales call is the interview phase. So you get together with the referral sources and allow their input to guide the development of your unique service flyers. Uh, allow your referral sources to have input in the design of your training as well. The more co-ownership they have in your collateral, 
the more they will want to refer it uh, to their patients or use it with their patients. So uh, print what the referral source needs on a flyer and present it on a sales call. And just try using only bullet points with your flyers to match the discharge population's needs. So let me give you some examples here of uh, some bullet points that you can put on disease-specific service uh, care plan flyers. Um, Alzheimer's disease is what I've got up here first. You pick out the services, their discharge population's needs, and get down to the specifics on the flyers. So uh, your brain fitness exercises are going to keep the client engaged. Uh, you'll have direct patient supervision with them to prevent wandering. Medication reminders are going to keep them compliant. With Alzheimer's disease, toileting reminders, meal preparation, it's going to maintain nutrition and safety, uh, social stimulation with these patients to combat the loneliness and depression that sinks in, uh, the meal preparation and direct supervision with food consumption for safety here uh, and to prevent weight loss or gain. Uh, and here's a look here at an arthritis specific brochure uh, and, and both flyer for a disease specific care plan. And with arthritis, uh, you, you can assist with housekeeping, uh, assist with proper transferring to prevent any further joint damage, prepare meals to maintain the correct diet and avoid discomfort. Uh, it's very well known that uh, arthritis patients uh, have a hard time of lifting wet clothes uh, out of the washer. You're going to assist them to avoid lifting and prevent joint stress. For diabetes, since there is somewhat of a disadvantage compared to home health and hospice because you are less clinical, if you can show up and say, here's what we found, here's what we intend to do and provide, and here's our expected result. If you can do that, when you start talking in language like that, you have the clinical referral source's attention. So by doing these disease-specific flyers, that's exactly what you're going to accomplish. Uh, so diabetes here, you're going to monitor the skin condition. It's big, especially on lower extremities for physicians uh, that know, know those private duty agencies that knows enough to apply lotion after bathing it and report back to any skin changes. You want to monitor self-recorded blood sugars. Uh, some private duty agencies now have off-site monitoring uh, that goes back to the clinical referral sources. And just to uh, show you a couple more examples here, uh, stroke, uh, another great one, direct supervision of uh, activities of daily living, transfer assistance again for patients with paralysis or partial paralysis. Uh, support with feedings at mealtime for the clients who have difficulty swallowing. Uh, again, you're matching your services to that specific discharge population's patient needs. I certainly encourage you to use your own experiences and the knowledge you have of your own market. Create the flyer that best matches your local referral sources patients and begin that disease-specific outreach and those conversations with your clinical referral sources. Whatever you do, don't show up at your local physician's office with your general service brochure and some cookies on every sales call. Uh, do something different uh, to separate yourself from the competition. Show them that you have gone the extra step to understanding their unique discharge patient's needs, and above that, learn how to speak their language. When you're asking the questions about specific uh, uh, diseases in their populations there, you're going to get referrals. You're going to get that discharge planner or physicians to think of patients immediately that you're describing back to them. Okay, so before we get into the question and answer session here, a couple things. Uh, number one, for all of those uh, on the call today who have joined me till the end, thank you. And uh, as my way of saying thanks, I'd like to offer a couple things to you. Number one is 20% off any collateral item ordered for the next 30 days. Uh, that includes uh, our four-step uh, care plan oversight process materials that I've shown you today, the guidelines for home health admission, face-to-face uh, -face charts. But again, 20% off any collateral item ordered uh, for the next 30 days. Uh, and I want to give you a free newsletter download, um, and I can... Uh, Give you more information on that, and I'm going to send my. I'm going to put my contact information up on the screen here shortly. I will tell you how to get that uh, if you get in contact with me. Now, as always, um, 
we offer a free coaching call with one of our coaches we have on staff here at TAG. They'll spend about 30 to 45 minutes with you discussing uh, the top five referral sectors in your market, how to approach each with a focused and targeted sales message. I encourage everybody to take advantage of this uh, because it's free, <laughs> and I think you'll get a lot out of it. You really will. So, uh, again, once I put my contact information up, you just uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. I'll set that up for you. Uh, our coaching services are in conjunction with uh, membership to myhomecaresalescoach.com. Uh, if you go there straight from the site, you're also able to check out a free seven-day trial of the site where we basically split this into two gigantic libraries, uh, one on the sales side with tips, weekly blogs, uh, how to approach different referral sectors, uh, some coaching columns, and then there's a marketing side complete with downloadable templates that your agency can use, download those, put your uh, logo on, and, and actually print those out from your office and use out in the field. Uh, and then there's monthly coaching calls associated with your membership. So if you want to test that out, you get the free coaching call, and you can go to the site for a seven-day trial uh, to browse around and to see uh, what we've got there for you to use on both the sales and marketing side. So I will start looking through the questions here and going to um, uh, answer these live now. And I've got my information up on the screen for you. So let me just start going through the questions here. At, at first glance, as I'm going through here, there are questions again about uh, how do I get a copy of the PowerPoint, how do I get the slides. Um, we will send out a follow-up email. If you registered for this webinar, you will automatically get the follow-up email probably sometime tomorrow. And again, that's got a link uh, in the email uh, where you can go to a site and download the slides from today uh, as well as any of the previous webinars excuse me that we've done on the spring series uh, there's a question here of, about uh, if the nurse practitioner is billing for care plan oversight at uh, 85 percent are different codes used for that billing it's, it's the same coding with the form 1500 the provider number uh, provided on that form will make the reimbursements automatically reduced Uh, do hospitalists have additional restrictions as well? Um, our understanding is that hospitalists, as long as they don't fall into restrictions uh, that were already mentioned, can file a 485, and many hospitalists are filing the cert and uh, allowing the primary care physician to do the recertification and the oversights. There's a question here about when physicians show no interest in your sales pitch, is it because they are really not interested, or is it because they have their own agency? Um, and uh, Felicia, I know Eric has addressed your question here, but I think it's good for, for everybody else on the call to hear, but it's, it's kind of what we've uh, hit on today. Uh, and most of the time, it's neither. It's just that they may not see the benefits of referring to home health in general. And so we must bring them something of value um, it, you know, reminding them of care plan oversight, bringing their patients back on follow-up visits. And, you know, your, uh, for the private duty side, I mean, you know, your medication reminders, your transfer ser transportation services, excuse me, are going to allow those patients to, to show up for those office visits. And that's uh, helping that physician. I mean, that's a big deal. Missed revenue on those uh, missed office visits is huge. So you've got to provide something of benefit. You can't just show up uh, with your general services brochures and uh, just try to tell them everything you provide in one sales call because they've heard it so many times before and they're getting blown up on a daily basis uh, that they're just able to use the same old worn out shutdown statement. And this is one of the major, major areas uh, where our home care coaches can help you if that's where you're getting stuck. There's a question on can rural clinics bill for search and research. Um, there are restrictions against rural clinics filing. Currently, the simple answer there is no. Uh, however, uh, it's encouraged to, to check with the actual clinic on their official designation. A lot of questions here about specific reimbursement for specific parts of the uh, or for all, all different states here, if you can just get in touch with me via email or um, 
uh, phone, I can I can help you out with that. Um, just one thing I want to, as I'm looking through the uh, questions here, I just want to make sure, uh, as far as the reimbursement is concerned, to the physician uh, assistants and the nurse practitioners, they're automatically set based on the provider number sent in on the Form 1500. So the home health agencies do not have to be involved. Um, a question here about is billing for care plan oversight currently a hot button for the OIG? Um, yes and no. Yes in that it, the sense that Medicare fraud uh, is obviously more and more prevalent and, and the OIG is cracking down. Uh, so when a physician who has not been billing for care plan oversight all of a sudden has got 10 to 15 patients being billed, this might flag them. Um, but, you know, that's exactly why we created the uh the oversight oversight logging sheet, and I'll see if I can get back to it here. These were uh, the pads created in the 25 and the 50. So with the minute tracker, uh, I'll just get back to the screen with just that. The, the, that's a, exactly why we created the minute tracker and, and the quick reference guide here. Uh, it, it's meant to be a clear-cut documentation of care plan oversight uh, that the physician can put in with the patient file in case they're uh, to be used for any auditing purposes if it happens. Uh, and by using this, your physicians have nothing to worry about. Um, and, you know, the flagging that's going on, it's been going on for quite some time. It's not uncommon or, or something to be feared. It's just uh, when they see uh, the, the CPO being billed for the first time to a lot of patients, uh, it's just um, cause for awareness there. Yeah, uh, once again, uh, to everybody, you will get an email that has a link where you can go and download the slides from today's presentation. I am also very happy to send you uh, any samples of anything you would want to see, and I will get back to my contact information here on the PowerPoint. But I think that is going to about do it uh, for today, and make sure you come back next week here. Before I get to my contact information, I'll put this up again next Tuesday, or I guess maybe it's two Tuesdays. Uh, May 17th will be the uh, Little Known Secrets to Boost Your Hospice Referrals uh, with our buddy Eric, and he will do the accountable care organizations and uh, marketing patient outcomes and elevating your agency above the competition to wrap things up on May 24th. So I hope you join us for all those. Thanks for uh, hanging with me today. Please call me, email me with any questions you think of after we get off samples, uh, care plan oversights rates, uh, just to say hey, whatever you want to do. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon.